Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I hope we've got something quite extraordinary for you today. And this is because this puzzle, which is called The Aquarium uh, by Rubens Cube, uh, Rubens Cube actually uh, made their debut on the channel only about a week ago. And I think Rubens Cube is a Dutch mathematician. Uh, I hope I'm not misspeaking there. But, but this puzzle, which only came out a few days ago, has been recommended umpteen times to us in the meantime. And um, the recommendations have been from some of the great and good of the Sudoku community. Uh, Emre Kolotoglu, uh, who is an absolute genius, described this as a masterpiece. And Demono, who featured in yesterday's video on the channel, if you watch that, you know the sort of brain that Demono has. Demono wrote to us overnight to say this is absolutely spectacular. So. I'm looking forward to trying it. It's an incredibly regular looking grid. Um, anyway, I'll read you the rules in just a moment. First thing I need to do today is to say a hearty congratulations to Audrey Spiller over there in Portland, Oregon. Um, Audrey, you have won our monthly reward competition on Patreon. Um, so congratulations. And I'll be sending you a Bubba is you key this afternoon. Um, and uh, yeah, Mark and I have been working hard on the Patreon reward for May, which of course will come out in just, uh, well, four days time, 1st of May. Um, so uh, I'll tell you more about that tomorrow. Uh, and of course, also over on Patreon at the moment, we have Kinlux's incredible uh, Sudoku hunt, much more difficult. We have had hundreds of entries to that though, which is, well, it's a testament to the, the sheer brilliance of the minds of our patrons. Um, and uh, if you are stuck though on that hunt and there would be no shame in being stuck on it, some of the puzzles are very difficult, uh, do go over to Discord, go to the Patreon chat channel in Discord and you will find lots of people discussing those puzzles, including Kinlux. And there's no better person to tell you how to solve a Kinlux puzzle than Kinlux, trust me. Um, now that's all the news, so let's get on with the aquarium. And I think the rules are fairly standard today. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along thermometers must increase from the bulb end. So that's telling you that if this cell here was a two, then this square here would have to be higher than two because we're moving along the thermometer away from the bulb. That could be a four, it doesn't have to be a three. You can jump digits and that could be an eight. So two, four, eight would be a legitimate way of filling in the thermometer. So as mercury rises along the thermometer, so must our digits. Um, cells with a gray square contain even digits. So there seem to be nine of those regularly disposed in the grid, which is a bit suspicious. Uh, so these digits here, this highlighted in blue, all have to contain even digits. And adjacent digits along a green line differ by at least five. So this is a German whispers line. And what that means is if this square here was a, I don't know, let's make it a seven. Uh, this square here would have to be at least five different from seven. So it could be a two, it could be a one, but they, they would be its only choices. Let's make it a two. Now this square has to be at least five different from two, and that could be a seven, an eight, or a nine. And that's how the green lines work. And that's all the rules. <laughs> Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual and that will take you to a page that looks identical to this one, where you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. And my first thought here is that it must be about ones and nines, this puzzle, because the thermometers are too short. You know, some, in some puzzles you get great big thermometers that Mark enjoys pencil marking, but not even Mark would pencil mark a, three, a length three thermometer because this digit here can be almost anything. It can be, uh, well, yeah, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, or three. Um, but we do at least know with a one and a nine that, it's, that you can only put a one in the bulb of a thermometer. If you try and put a one halfway along it, you're gonna to have to put zero or a negative number into the bulb and that won't work from a Sudoku perspective. Similarly, if you try and put a nine anywhere on the thermometer, apart from in the tip, you'll have a big problem entering a double digit number here. Even though Sven's software is magnificent, it doesn't allow you to do that. So don't. Um, so, we can, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so we have a swordfish straight off the bat in row three, I can see, because those cells 
in each of these rows are the only positions, let's give this some highlighting, these are the only positions that nines can go in. Because nine, last time I checked, is not an even number, nine can't go in the bulb, so in these three rows you can't put nine anywhere but in those three cells. And they are sort of, they're matching in terms of their columns, and this is a pattern we call the swordfish. And you might be saying, well, that's full very well, but what's a swordfish? Don't worry, I'm going to tell you. If you find a swordfish, like this. Oh, in an aquarium. Ha <laughs> ha! That is interesting. So that title actually is now making me think that we have got lots of swordfishes or possibly other types of fishes in this puzzle. Um, but if you find a swordfish, what does it mean? Well, we found a swordfish in the rows here because the nines are restricted to the same three columns of the grid in each of these three rows. Now, where you find a swordfish in the rows, the restriction that you get from the swordfish applies in the columns. And the way to understand that is to ask facetious questions about those columns. So I'm going to ask a facetious question about column one. And that question is, how many nines are we expecting to find in that column in the finished puzzle? Let's just say we finished the puzzle perfectly. How many nines would there be in column one? It's not a trick question. The answer is one. There will only be one nine because of the rules of Sudoku. Similarly, for column four, how many nines are we expecting there? Again, the answer is one. How many nines are we expecting here? Again, the answer is one. So in these three columns all together, we are expecting there to be three nines. But we know already that there are three nines in these nine cells because we know there's one nine in those three cells in row three, one nine in those three cells in row six, and one nine in those three cells in row nine. So in these columns, the three nines we need are restricted to those purple cells. So that means we can say straight away that you cannot put nines in any of those yellow cells. Because if, you, and let's prove that to ourselves, let's try and put the nine in the tip of this thermometer well, now, where does the 9 go in row 3? Well, it doesn't matter. Let's try and put it here. Where does the 9 now go in row 6? It's got to go here because it can't go in these two anymore. And now there is nowhere for a 9 at all in row 9. So that's sort of demonstrating why we can't put a 9 in any of the yellow cells. So this must be important. And it's telling us that now... For example, I can't put an 8 in the bulb of any of these thermos. <laughs> because if I was to try and put an, uh, an 8 in one of these cells, that would of course put a 9 in the tip of the thermo and break the swordfish. So, that's interesting. Right, but... But before we go further with eights, why don't we think about ones? Because ones in this column seem to have a sort of analogous restriction to the nines in, this, in these rows. Where are ones in those three columns? And again, remember, we can't put one part way along a thermo. One is not even, so the ones are locked into... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's something very, very beautiful I've just realised about this. The green cells here are the only positions for ones in the columns. So that is a swordfish on ones. It's exactly the same logic. So again, the way to understand the restriction that's going to uh, arise from the ones being locked into these positions in the columns is to think about the rows. In these three rows of the grid, we know there are going to be exactly three ones but we know the green squares contain exactly three ones. So now in the rows, we can't put ones in any of these cells. All of these cells, I'll make them blue for a moment, cannot be ones anymore, which is actually interesting because it's taking one out of the bulb of these, ther these short stubby thermos. So not only can this cell now not be an eight, it now can't be a one either. Um, but, but, this is good swordfish practice, because if you've noticed these ones, see if you can find another swordfish, this time on nines. Um, I'm going to do this Agad Meta style. <laughs> I'll give you a moment. 
um, if you managed to find it, congratulations. Um, now, the, 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 the key is to notice that nines are actually equally restricted in, in these columns. Because you can't put nine, nine is not even, and nine can't go in a dog leg, just as one couldn't go in the dog leg of these thermos, neither can nine, because you'd have to put a 10 at the tip of the thermo. So there is a swordfish on nines as well as ones in the green cells, which, which is telling us that It's telling us that I can't put a nine in the tip of this thermo anymore. So in fact, yeah, this is really strange. If you look at each box individually now, the effect of the nine, the purple nine swordfish is to remove nines from those two squares. And the, the effect of the nine green swordfish is to remove nine from that cell. So in each box now, you can't put a nine in these little these little triominoes, and we could extend that all through the grid. I don't intend to do that, but we might have to remember that. Um, now, if you can't put nine in the tip of a thermo, you can't put seven. Right, so I'm, I'm saying right, but I was about to follow that with, am I wrong about this? I don't think I am. If you can't put nine in the tip of a thermo, a three cell thermo, you can't now put seven in the bulb. So where does seven go in row three? And surely the answer to that question, seven is not even, is only in the purple cells again. So I think that there is a swordfish on sevens now in the same cells we had a swordfish on nines. So, so far I've found four swordfishes in this puzzle, which seems to be a very large number indeed. So, oh good grief, right. Right, now let's, let's go back to ones again. And I'll tell you this, there is a swordfish on ones that's just been staring at us. See if you can find it. I mean, it's great practice, this, for finding fishes. But, okay, I'm about to tell you the answer, so pause if you don't want to know. Um, but look at look at row two. And this actually was, this I probably should have got this one immediately. Because, because you can't put a one partially along a thermometer, the only cells in row two, two that could take the one are those three and that's going to be analogous because of the symmetry of the puzzle in every box so those cells are a swordfish on ones in the rows oh this is this is this is too clever this is too clever right so so now There's loads of swordfish. There's swordfishes galore here. This is absolutely stunning. Yes. All right, let's start with the first thing I've noticed, which is that we, we found a one swordfish in, in rows two, five, and eight. So the restriction that, that that gives rise to is in the columns, because we know in columns two, five, and eight, where there will only be three ones in the correct solution. And we know that there are three ones in the blue cells. So what does this mean? It means we can't put ones in these bulbs anymore. And why does that matter? Well, if we think about what that does to the geometry, if you can't put ones, I'll just make these, these squares red for a moment, in the, if you can't put ones in the red cells, and you can't now, where do the ones go in row three, six, and nine now? One's not, one is not even. One can't go in the bulb, so one has to go in the purple. So there is now a swordfish on ones in the purple. And there is also, of course, we've already found it, a swordfish on sevens and a swordfish on nines in the purple. So now we have three overlapping swordfish. Is that the plural of swordfish? Or is it swordfishes? I don't know. Um, it's not swordsfish. Um, and that means that these squares have to contain the digits 179 in some order. So there is a 179 triple now in purple. 
No, it's my phone. Hang on, let me see if I can just. It's, it's, it's only Mark. I'll see if I can just turn that off for a second. Ah! There we go. I think it's gone. Um, yeah, this is, I can't stop doing this video now because it's too. It's this is too extraordinary. I don't want to pause. And I had noticed something else um, before Mark rudely interrupted me. What was it I saw? I saw. Yeah. Yes, I know what I saw. Th this geometry trick, I think it works with nines as well. So we know there's a swordfish on nines in in the green, and we know that was a swordfish in the columns, so it's restricting the rows. So it's removing nine as a possibility from the tips of these thermos. So I'm just going to make those red for a moment. So now look at column two, column five, and column eight, and ask where nine goes. Because you can't put them in red anymore because of the green swordfish, you create a swordfish in blue because you can't put nine in the bulb of the thermo. So the only place places for nines in these columns is in the blue cells. So that makes another swordfish. So hang on, now this puzzle has had seven swordfishes in it. It's had a swordfish on ones in three positions, a swordfish on sevens in one, nines in three, But, having said all that, we haven't actually cracked this, have we? So, let me think about this. So, one now. Right. What? Yeah, okay. One is incredibly restricted in this puzzle. Because we've got three swordfishes on ones. Now, I think that means that we have to think about the digit 2. Because, because, because we can't now put a 2 here or here. Because if we try and put a 2 in either of those positions, let me just highlight those for a moment. If either of these were a 2, you would have to put a 1 in one of the bulbs. And we, 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 it's very clear you can't put a 1 here because of the 179 triple in the column 1 already. But you also can't put a 1 here because of the blue swordfish. Well, actually, and the 179 triple because it also applies in the rows. So those two squares can't be 2s. But surely that means... that <laughs> This is so ridiculous. Right, that logic that says we can't put twos in those positions, of course applies in every single box because they are all the same. All the boxes are the same. So in row two, where does the two go? Well, it goes in a blue cell. And that gives us another swordfish, this time on twos. So there is a one, two, nine um, swordfish. One, two, nine overlapping swordfishes in blue. which means that we've got our eighth swordfish and now now what's that telling me well surely that means i've got a swordfish on fours i mean i must do uh, because because now i can look at this column can't i if I look at these columns and the geometries and I say, where does four go? I can't put four now in the tip of the thermo because if I do, then this square here has to be, well, I could go four, three, and this square has to be a one or a two and it can be neither. So the only place fours can now go is in the bulbs. <laughs> and if the fours are locked into the bulbs in every position, that is a swordfish on fours. For our ninth swordfish, for those keeping count, um, that is absolutely beautiful because now look at row three or indeed row six or row nine because we've got a four now uh, in, we've got a swordfish on fours in the columns 
sword uh, that restricts the position of four in the row and we can no longer put a four in any of the square cells so those square cells have got to be two six and eight which now means we actually know we've sort of got uh, we, we know the orange squares now by elimination because we've got triples in, in we've got a two six eight triple and a one seven nine triple so the cells in orange have to now be three I want to say three four or five um, which which of course now gives us the tips of the thermos because we've now got in these columns we have one two three four five and nine already placed so we've got six sevens and eights to go in the tips of the thermos and we are really close actually to completely triplicating the puzzle if I can get if I can force something into this this cell that's not a one or a nine in each box then I can triplicate the whole puzzle and that would be incredibly exciting so which digit is it going to be that we can do that with and the answer is I'm not immediately sure is it three the answer is yes it is <laughs> I've done it I've done it I've literally done it I think um, yes okay so look at three now in these columns where ask where it goes now you can't put it on the on the dog leg of any of these thermos because that's going to need a one or a two beneath it which it can't be so the three in these columns has to be in green and therefore they are a swordfish well an overlapping swordfish is on one threes and nines which means these squares have to be a one three nine triple and now now we've triplicated the whole puzzle I think because now I can look at every bulb cell because the geometry is identical in every box and I can fill this in with twos, fours and fives so now each one of sort of each of these positions in every box has to be three, six or eight and now the dog leg positions in every box have to be something else which is four, five or seven and that's working from the column as well so that so the whole puzzle has been triplicated by a sequence of about I don't know how many different swordfishes there were but it was a great many it was an aquarium full of swordfishes and Ruben's cube already needs to be taking a bow and we need to be genuflecting madly before I think it's a him um, because what he has produced here is absolutely ridiculously clever now oh and now the whisper does it doesn't it oh this is so beautiful right so this puzzle obviously has incredible uh, replication in it except for the green whispers line which I now think we should look at because what goes on the green whispers line and one digit that you cannot put on the green whispers line is a five because if you do what is the adjacent digit to five going to be it has to be five different from five so it's got to be a, a ten or higher or a zero or lower none of which neither of which are valid sudoku options so we can take fives out of both of those squares which forces this to be a low digit one thing we know about German whispers lines is that they have to alternate polarity as we move along them. So because this digit is less than five, the next digit on the line has to be greater than five. And you can actually see immediately, if you try to put a one here, there's no way to fill this bulb in with a digit that's five away from one. So that's another way of just seeing instantly. Now this square has to be low polarity again you can see if it's seven it just utterly breaks this square so that is our first digit is a four which gives us a three here <laughs> this now can't be seven because that's not five away so that's a nine um this digit is no that digit can still be two or four both of those are five away but now we can do uh what can we do we can do eliminations look we've got fours looking at all sorts of things 
<laughs> We've got threes looking at all sorts of things. And we've got nines looking at all sorts of things. Now, did I? No, I didn't. I suddenly realised I didn't get rid of the threes options in here or the fours options. So, right, what's that done? So now this is two or five. Oh, that doesn't affect what this can be. We need this to work, really, don't we? Because there's not going to be any other breaks in the symmetry. So somehow, some way, I think filling in this 3, 4 pair and this 9 have to have done absolute magic. But how have they done said magic? is I don't know actually um, how has this resolved things and as usual I will make my apologies now if you're seeing immediately how this is sorted out I most certainly am not seeing that threes what's this done it has. I mean, obviously, we've created these pairs everywhere. But I don't know, like five, seven pairs there. Four, five pairs around the threes. You can't have a three here anymore because you'd have to put one in both of those cells because you'd have to go three, two, and then those would both be one. That's not three. But that doesn't even restrict this digit. Oh, it does a six eight pair here though. Ah, six eight, six eight, so that's a three. So that's got to be a two. Ah, ah, that's actually helpful. Because now that's a five. Oh, that doesn't give us this digit. But it does mean that's a four. Has that really done anything? Again, oh, look, yeah, no, it has actually. That's a five. That's a seven. Aha, that's an eight. That's a five. So that's got to be a four. Um, well, that, that got quite exciting for a moment or two. This is a six. That's an eight. Six, eight. That's a two. That's a one. That's a three. Okay, now I am prepared to get more excited, I think. That's not three, therefore. These aren't eights. Um, that's not a one, that's not a one, that's not a two, that's got to be a nine. So that's a one, that's a nine, that's a two. So this square is not two or eight, actually that's six. So that's got to be the eight. This is seven, this is one, this is six, this is seven. And now we've done. Oh, yeah, not only have we done the, the central three rows of the grid, but that's a four looking at the whisper. So that's a two. That doesn't give us this digit. Um, but does that do any damage to anything else? That's not eight. That's not eight. That's not three. That's not three. Those aren't twos. And these aren't sevens. So we get, oh, I see, we just get this sequence of pairs in the columns, which is not enough. That can't be five. So that can't be five. Oh, look, one. Somehow this, oh, yeah, 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 look. This one. And this two are looking at that square. So that's got to be a nine. And that's how the symmetry is getting broken. Aha. So now that's a two. Which means this is a, this is a five. Which, oh no, it doesn't, doesn't give us this digit. Oh, no, it does. There's a six here. So that's eight. That's six. That's eight. Um, that's seven. There's a six here. So that's six. 
Um, that's giving me a 1 and a 7. Um, and now this must be resolved. That's 4, that's 3, that's 4, that's 5, and that's 3. Good grief. And this is... Oh, look, there's 3 and 4. How, how have you done this? This is like magic. That's 7 by, by thermologic, so that's 8 by thermologic. So that's 5 by Sudoku logic. That's 7 by Sudoku logic. So that's 4, which means that's got to be 3, which means that's 5. So all my orange cells are now resolved. That's got to be a 9 by Sudoku. That's got to be a 7. So that's 9, and therefore that's 1. Yeah, so this is the way to do this, is to sort of try and unwind the swordfishes using the colours. That seems to be a more profitable way of doing it than the way I was doing it. There's a 1 and a 9 looking at the green, so this is all done. 3, 9. <laughs> um, now, this is a 7, so thermologic tells me that's an 8, which gives me a 6 at the top of the grid. Um, that's probably doing marvellous things, but I can't see what they are. Oh, that's a 2 by Sudoku, so that's got to be a 4. 2 and 6 give me an 8 here, so that should down sell down there. It needs to be a 2. So this is 4 or 5, it's a 4. This has got to be a 6, so that's got to be a 3. So this has got to be a 6, and this has got to be an Two, nearly put eight there. That would have been a shank. That's a six. So that's a seven. So this is a five. <laughs> and if I've not made an error, that's an eight. What a remarkable... Yes. <laughs> what a remarkable puzzle that is. That is one of the greatest puzzles you will ever do. Um, I am stunned... I'm stunned that I've never seen anything like that before. I've seen puzzles with sequential swordfishes, but I haven't seen anything that required the sheer number of swordfish that were, I'm, I'm mixing up my plurals, but that seemed to be necessary there. And the way that you could, I really like the fact that it wasn't terribly difficult to spot as well. It was very clear it must be ones and nines at the start, but it was beautiful the way that you could then sort of impute swordfishes around two sevens I, I remember what i got one on fours i think i got one on threes at one point um and then it all gets unwound very cutely by the whisper it's a stunner that is a stunner i'm looking forward to the comments on this uh i just hope enough people try this puzzle because it deserves an enormous audience thank you so much for watching um, and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic Thank you.